An ideal city does not suggest a top-down master plan, but rather a bottom-up spatial assemblage of vignettes, dreams, and playful interaction. And to students especially, if you're ever feeling stuck in studio, just wander down to the atrium and spend some time exploring all the nooks and crannies of this exhibition. I guarantee you'll find a, a nugget of architectural sustenance and inspiration for your work. Um, I first encountered drawing architecture studio's work about five years ago, when I stumbled on and absolutely fell in love with their graphic novel Trilogy, which is entitled A Little Bit of Beijing. The three volumes in this series abound with highly populated and animated drawings that broadcast a rich portraiture of three specific districts in the city. Using cutaway axonometric and dense oblique drawings, as well as comic book style frames and dialogue, these graphic novels share poignant narratives about complex cities and vernacular architecture in accessible but also visually exuberant ways. Drawing Architecture Studio's work doesn't just document the city and its inhabitants and its vernacular fabric, but it also transforms and playfully reinvents it in the process. And as my students know well, I've been personally using Drawing Architecture Studio's oblique drawings as a teaching tool and as a reference point in all of my design studios here at the Illinois School of Architecture. It's such an incredible honor to welcome Li Han and Hu Yan to the Plim Auditorium. Please welcome me and join them. Thank you. We'd like to say a big thank you to Professor Joseph uh, Arthur and uh, Professor um, John Clark and the students who help us to put up the exhibition in the atrium. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, let's start. So uh, today's topic uh, uh, is ideal city. Uh, actually, ideal city means many things to us. First day is this. Uh, big drawer in the night this summer, and uh, now it's high in the lobby. Uh, second is the name of the exhibition here. Uh, actually, it's our first solo exhibition in the US, uh, so we put a lot of ambition in this exhibition uh, by playing the uh, game of scale. 1 to 20 will actually make the exhibition site more than uh, 40,000 square feet, and including more than 100 pieces of works. So it's really a kind of museum scale exhibition. So uh, many thanks to uh, the Illinois School of Architecture to give us this opportunity to exhibit our work. Um, the concept of ideal city is very uh, classic uh, in the history of architecture. Uh, even back in 100 years ago, like this artwork from the Renaissance, the, art, uh, the artists, the philosophers, and the scholars, and they started to envision what uh, the ideal city could be for everyone. We assume that uh, at that time it was probably easier to do so because the city scale was not that large. But today, with uh, big, large, large cities, like with millions of population, uh, we really think that it's difficult to plan anything ideal for everyone. So we really uh, have the question that uh, if this topic is still really relevant in uh, con to the current context. Yes, yeah, so also this kind of uh, top-down thinking of this classical ideal city concept, is it a little bit, uh, a little bit out of, uh, outdated? Uh, we are a little bit wondering about that. Uh, but on the other hand, I think uh, in the bottom of part of Every architect, there always a strong desire to design a city or envision a city, of course, an ideal city. So, for us, actually, ideal city is the ultimate topic for every architect. So in our own practice, we don't really do a lot of design, we mostly uh, make a representation for cities. But when we look back at our works, we found that this one piece might be really relevant. 
relevant to this subject by the city. This is a mural we did in the year 2020 for the Empress Museum in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. Uh, this is for a uh, event called the uh, Archigram Cities Symposium and plus organized in that year. Because right now M plus is holding the, the whole collection of archigram works. And the purpose of the event is to uh, create a dialogue between the archigram members and other architects and uh, talk about the influence of archigram in the urban development. So together with the curator, we uh, try to find some clues for this project. We picked up uh, three most famous projects by Archie Graham, uh, Plug-in City, Walking-in City, and Underwater City. You can tell from the name that we try to focus on these three aspects of how a city is constructed. And because it's about a dialogue, about the influence of Archie Graham, we also need to include the, uh, the works, some of very famous projects from other architects of their generation or later generation to uh, make the uh, drawing together. So for the first stage, we came up with these uh, three uh, poster format drawings. Uh, in the air, on the ground, and under, and under the sea. These are the two categories that, categories that we put all these projects together by the architects. But our personal interest always lies in some vernacular structures in our everyday life. So in these drawings, we try to uh, fit in some uh, uh, everyday uh, uh, structure, like the residents from uh, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Beijing, <laughs> uh, like these kind of street vendors we find everywhere, and we put them together into this walking city scene. We, we think that they share a similar concept. And also these uh, very ingenious floating houses uh, in Cambodia shows how people deal with this uh, water environment try to make a living space. Yeah, and this is the final looking of uh, the drawing. We actually uh, connect three posters together to form a very complicated final version. Uh, although the designs in the drawing is uh, uh, made by those famous uh, superstars, but by uh, collecting their uh, design together, actually we uh, made another version of Ideal City. Uh, I think this version is belong to uh, Archibald and uh, their generation of architects like Akizum or uh, Super Studio or maybe in Japan, uh, Metallists. Uh, I think that's a generation that believe in the utopia of technology. And uh, we are very fortunate that we have the opportunity to present our drawings to Archibald members. Uh, in this symposium, and got some feedbacks from them. But the posters is not important. Yes, I did. Yes. I mean, they're amazing, aren't they? But am I acting them stupid simultaneously? Well, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for the comment. We take it as a compliment. <laughs> uh, although we never intended to design an ideal city in our own uh, works, uh, but over the years, when we try to look at our, uh, our projects from the idea of concept, uh, the concept of ideal city, we suddenly realize that actually, little by little, we uh, have been building up our own version of ideal city. And so, and, uh, among these uh, ideal cities, we found that uh, there are some urban elements we really interested about, and uh, we portray them over and over. So we try to categorize the projects that we are going to share with you tonight. Uh, in this, uh, uh, with these urban elements. The first one is uh, apartment buildings. Uh, this is a drawing uh, we made a long time ago, and uh, it's actually a uh, residential area in, Be in the city of Beijing. Uh, actually, uh, both our home and uh, our studio are located in uh, such kind of residential area. You can tell there are a lot of uh, high-rise apartment buildings. Uh, uh, actually, sometimes we think maybe for Asian city, uh, apartment buildings really the engine to design a whole uh, 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 ideal city because most people actually live in such type of building. Uh, for us, actually, uh, the most interesting part is not the building itself, but the multiplication 
that the residents made for this building. The first uh, example we want to share with you about apartment building story in Beijing is this one, uh, this small one, small building <coughs> in the very the most famous fashionable uh, shopping area in Beijing called Sanatun. And this building is located on this uh, small street. Its nickname is Thirty Street, and uh, connecting to uh, big shopping malls here. The first time we noticed this building is in the year two thousand eight. We found that uh, in the lower floors of this building, you have a lot of uh, small restaurants and shops. It's not really unusual to have this kind of mixed use in a residence building. What's unique about this building is that we found in, uh, they not only have have uh, business on the first floor, they also uh, have a business on the second. The owners will open up the balconies and the windows, making them into facades and add ladders, so the customers can just directly climb into the store from the ground floor. So we decided to make some documentation. We visited each uh, interior and uh, used this uh, uh, technical drawing to try to document the interest use of space. I think uh, at that moment we uh, were influenced by the uh, by a, a Japanese architecture studio called Akira Bolo and a published book called Made in Tokyo. And they use uh, accent drawing to record the uh, ordinary building in Tokyo. So uh, basically we uh, followed their method and uh, using accent drawing to document uh, the daily building in Beijing, but we kind of uh, uh, adding more details and furniture, small elements into the actual drawing. So I think in this drawing we are kind of falling in love with this, you know, this kind of drawing style, actual drawing, which we believe is the best media to uh, record the city because it's very really powerful in terms of. Uh, drawing details, adding density to the drawing. So over the years, we uh, kept coming back to the site and to observe how it developed. This is in the year 2016. And you can see from the picture that the, the, there are more shops. They are growing out of the building, grow into the street, and there are more uh, visitors. And the boundaries between the building and the street become really blurred. And uh, so we, we found that at this stage, uh, black and white technical drawing is not enough to portray this. We decided to add colors to get more, add more uh, uh, dynamics into the, our uh, portrayal of the building. So here in this piece, we focus on to portray the, uh, uh, the nightlife of the building. Uh, we want people to feel that they can almost hear the noise when they see the drawing. Uh, actually, our uh, drawing text uh, is uh, developed with the development of this residential building. Uh, uh, we are playing with uh, colors, uh, shadows, uh, movements, uh, because uh, action drawing usually looks very original and uh, very colored. Uh, what we want is to add in you know, the real atmosphere, add in sensibility to this original, uh, rational drawing. And also we want to play with the, uh, you know, the different viewpoints. So in this version you can tell uh, we combine the uh, warm eye uh, view with the uh, bird eye view. So it looks uh, kind of a little bit like a, a, a magic, uh, realistic sense. And another interesting thing we find about the, this building at this point is that uh, if you see this picture that at night, uh, we always wonder that how residents live in this environment since every night is so noisy. Uh, first time when we look at these <coughs> dark rooms on the middle floors, we, we saw that people maybe they don't live here anymore. But when we see some clothes hanging in the balconies, we realize that they do live there. These uh, middle floors, they are actually rented out to people who work for these shops. So it becomes very logical that they go to work at night and go back to sleep in the morning and uh, no one is really disturbed. And we found that this really uh, ingenious solution is actually develop a self-sustainable system that everyone find their balance. We think this is really important. We think that this building can maybe stay here forever because it's really uh, 
uh, can self sufficient in some way. So here in the drawing, we also show this middle part as the dome of the uh, people who work in the shops. The cynical part that also mentioned by the uh, side. Yeah. But uh, uh, some of these, such as uh, ballots, was uh, destroyed one day. It's uh, on April the uh, 24th, in 2017. On that day, the authorities <coughs> suddenly came and cracked down all the shops and uh, restaurants at the same time. The reason why they did it because uh, this kind of mixed use in residence buildings is actually a still um, has always been a great area in, in China or in Beijing. Uh, but uh, in those two years, like the local authorities, they started to think that they want to resume the original function of each building. So they don't allow uh, people to do business in residence anymore. So that's why to this day uh, they will come and try to take up everything. You will see from the photo that it looks like a war scene uh, in the area. And uh, that reminded us of uh, drawings by Luz, in which he uh, portrayed a lot of uh, war scenes in the city. And uh, we think that and since this is the most dramatic scene we have ever imagined, we can never imagine for a building, we want to focus on this kind of violent setting in this piece. And so here on the third uh, drawing for this building, we uh, spent uh, all our energy into uh, portraying the, uh, the garbage, the ruins, the destroyed structures, and also the machines when they, uh, <coughs> they try to crack down everything. And uh, what's even more unique is that uh, here it is not only you see the cracking down, at the same time you see the construction. On the picture in the center, you see that another group of workers, they are responsible for putting back the balconies and the windows. And the old shop owners at the same time they are still inside trying to do their business. And then people on the street they just walk through the those uh, the ruins and uh, see that nothing happened. Everything put together, we feel this is really the most dramatic moment we have ever seen. So this is the third story for this building, and uh, actually uh, the research of uh, the urban research actors parallel out with the drawing research. Uh, you can tell uh, this the drawer become dancer and dancer, and uh, in this drawing, I cannot realize that uh, action drawing uh, actually is a very special art form. So it has its uh, art special art language, and uh, with the help of software and uh, digital technology, you can uh, infinitely adding details complexity into the drawing and push this sort of uh, art language to the extreme. So I think uh, it's not just a representation to itself, it's an independent artwork. Yeah. And this is how the building looked like, looks like a uh, half a year later. Uh, it's become a totally new and you don't recognize any trace of those small businesses anymore. And the uh, fourth drawing, uh, actually the final drawing for this building, uh, you can tell the city in this drawing is very clean, very uh, organized and uh, beautiful. Maybe this is the uh, ideal city version for the authority. Um, but uh, actually the drawing style, we borrowed the style from those uh, socialist propaganda drawing, uh, which promoting a uh, Ideal life for everyone. But now, we everyone look at it, you can sense a bit of ironic feeling. Um, yeah, that's um, that's uh, uh, the whole story of this building. It, uh, the research lasts almost a decade without even full uh, action growing. Um, we feel very lucky to see the you know the, all the changes of this building within ten years. It's pretty dramatic. Um, um, I guess this person tells us ideal actually is really different. Depends how where you step for. Uh, to shop owners, to residents, to city leaders, to authorities. Uh, the ideal city can be really opposite to each other. So this is, I think, this work with more questions than giving answers. 
And this is a picture we took two years, uh, two months ago when we were back to the site. And you see this uh, man sitting here trying to sell uh, cigarettes. And far away, there's a new Louis Vuitton flagship store under construction. So we are wondering, probably this is the starting point of another cycle of this community development. Um, we, are, we will keep our eye on it. So the, the last story is rather uh, extraordinary uh, in terms of the, uh, the apartment buildings in Beijing. Usually, nothing, will, nothing so dramatic will happen, they will stay there forever. But there's one um, uh, small element we found in the apartment building that keep changing all the time. This is the, the backlinks, those, those parts that you see here. Uh, in Beijing and also in most of uh, northern China, China cities, we had to uh, close balconies because the climate is not so good in winter. It gets very windy and uh, dusty. Also, most people, they are striving for a uh, bigger space. Uh, with, by, in, by enclosing your balcony, you can have some extra space for your own apartments, like a study room or like a storage. So people often use their own uh, talent to design the balcony. This is also a great area. You can enjoy a certain freedom to do, make the best use of the material or uh, structure. So we are really uh, inspired by this kind of freedom of construction, in the, the balcony design. And uh, interestingly, we get the opportunity someday to make our own version of a balcony design. This is a project we did for a friend, the, uh, for his apartment renovation. And the name of it is called Free Balcony, and M means a small temple. And uh, from the name you can tell, uh, Beckley plays a very important role in the whole design. This is our uh, free Beckley end. The unique part of his, uh, the building he lives in is that the building is featured with this kind of uh, staggered uh, uh, Beckley's. So when they first purchase from the developer, the Beckley's are open. Uh, according to the Chinese regulation, those Beckley's are not charged into the, uh, the total area. That means the balcony is given to you by the developer for free. And then, uh, so the owners, they will, first thing they will do, they, they try to close this balcony to try to find more space. Although they actually have the freedom to design their own balcony, but uh, interestingly that they just do it all same, in the same style. They, they close it in this uh, glass box in order to maximize, maximize the space with the lowest cost. So it looks like as if they are built in uh, by the developer. We think it's really a pity that they didn't keep their freedom, enjoy their freedom for this design opportunity. And we persuade our friend to keep that freedom. So we made our version of uh, the, the free balcony for him. Uh, we turned it into a Japanese style TV. And the reason why we use Japanese style and uh, put it on a balcony in uh, Beijing, uh, in Beijing is because um, we really want to make a small haunted house for our brand and because having a small haunted house actually is everyone's dream. But uh, in city, uh, in the city of Beijing or China, uh, people living in the city cannot afford a rural land build their own haunted house due to the land policy. So, uh, but one day when I look at this, boxes hanging on the wall of apartment, I suddenly realized actually they can have their own holiday house. They are in the air. So uh, that's why we deliberately use this exotic style to give a strong sense of uh, holiday house. So uh, our friend can you know, escape uh, their, uh, his uh, daily life. By simply entering this small tea house in the balcony and have a small trip to Japan anytime he wants. So he liked this idea, so uh, we get this uh, uh, free, uh, free, uh, free, 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 we're not only interested in the apartment buildings in Beijing, but also in anywhere in China or in the world. And the next project is an uh, installation we did in the city of Chongqing in southeast China. It is more an exhibition, and the theme was to also make a great, a great artwork based on the observation of everyday life. So again, we 
uh, put our attention to the apartment buildings in Chongqing. The city of Chongqing is very unique compared to any other city in China because it has a very complex typology and you have different heights. Uh, you have a river and also you have this giant infrastructure running through the city. And so here you will find a lot of interesting corners. And the site we are given for the exhibition is uh, a big hall with this spiral uh, staircase in the center. And uh, we decided to make the best use of it to incorporate into our uh, installation. We made this uh, scale in the scale of one to four. We made a big model for a Chongqing apartment. And uh, by working around installation, you will see a lot of familiar things you will experience in the city. For example, if you walk around this uh, staircase, around the, uh, the tower, it feels like you are walking on these mountain pedestrians that you find a lot in the city, where you see the, uh, it feels like the, the buildings are by the mountain. And here also, when you look down onto the ground floor, it feels like you are uh, standing on the pedestrian and you look down into a valley that's composed by the buildings because of the different heights in the city. So again, we, are, uh, we were playing the game of scale uh, in this uh, installation, and uh, this is really, uh, I think the scale is really a powerful tool to, uh, to use for design. Uh, a lot of uh, famous artwork is using the similar method, like you know, the older birds' work, which enlarge small things to such a big scale. And, uh, uh, but for building, because building itself is very big, so it's hard to enlarge more. So it goes to the opposite direction, we shrink them into uh, smaller size. Uh, by doing this, actually, we turn uh, the interior space into a kind of urban space. And the second element we are very interested about is uh, infrastructure. We refer to those uh, highways, uh, train tracks, or the, uh, um, the, the sky trains, or some independent, uh, smaller uh, infrastructure uh, facilities you find in the city. And uh, back in very early years, we already started to uh, uh, pay attention to this kind of uh, infrastructure. Uh, for example, this is a uh, drawing about a uh, metro transfer station in Beijing. It was undergoing a uh, renovation at the time, so it has a really complex uh, transferring route. You see here in the middle of the drawing. So again, we use accident drawing to cut off the uh, open the land, uh, so to review, in order to review this complex interior of this metro station. And this is a relatively new drawing we made for Chongqing. It's a really large mural. And uh, as we mentioned before, Chongqing is a very special city. It has, uh, it has land, it has uh, a river, uh, different topo uh, topography. Uh, so the inf infrastructure in Chongqing goes to a crazy stage. They really build a lot of uh, highways, sky trains to connecting different heights together. So in this drawing, infrastructure is definitely the uh, main role, uh, play the most important role, and the building is you know, just uh, elements to fill in the gap between uh, the infrastructure and the land. Uh, with that infrastructure, is because, um, because it's a linear, linear character, it's really a uh, uh, powerful tool to give the structure of this kind of large order. And also because it's based on the unit and you can repeat, uh, you can achieve really uh, complexity uh, by doing, uh, simply doing the repeat of the unit. <coughs> and beside those uh, network or uh, linear style of infrastructure, we also love this kind of uh, indi individual independent structure, for example, parking garage in the city. And uh, because they, they sometimes they will locate in either the location or the scale or their uh, surroundings will give us very uh, interesting background to create something uh, magic. And here is, uh, uh, again, a finding we have in the city of Chongqing. 
the one here, there's a small uh, parking garage. It's very, the location is very typical of Chongqing. It's uh, under a highway bridge. It's uh, by a small river. And uh, what's interesting about the garage is that there's a Sichuan, it's a traditional local opera theater located inside this parking lot. Uh, the reason why it's here because the owner cannot afford any uh, regular space for her theater. So he find out that he can just rent some uh, parking uh, spots in the garage and turn them into a stage and turn them into a performance uh, place. And uh, nearby in this uh, parking garage, there's a small temple. It's, uh, it hosts a dragon king. Uh, it's, dragon king is supposed to be in charge of uh, water. So people often go there to pray for uh, better weather. But unfortunately, uh, the dragon king doesn't work all the time. Uh, one year, this uh, whole area got flooded. And so there's no exception for the garage and also for the theater. Here you see that everything inside is damaged. It's really a, a very sad situation. Uh, we, we were really amazed when we heard this story. And uh, it reminded us of many uh, relevant building reference. Uh, for example, the beautiful uh, Chinese traditional architecture in the area that blended into these uh, natural landscapes. Also, the, uh, the flooded theater reminded of a uh, uh, very famous uh, animation from our childhood. It was about an uh, underwater palace where the Dragon King lived there. And also, um, we were reminded of this kind of uh, uh, folk architecture where they, have, they sometimes have very crazy uh, insulation or structure. We really love this kind of street, uh, street forwardness and we try to put something together. So we, we want to make a story for, or make a, a project for this theater, we call it Dragon Theater. In this uh, sketch on the right, you will see that we try to put everything we like together. The, land, the cityscape of Chongqing, uh, this dragon-shaped uh, building, and the river, the, the temple, the highway. Uh, so it is uh, just a mixture of everything. But we found that because this story is so uh, extraordinary, one single drawing is never enough. We decided to make it into a graphic novel. And uh, in this case, we had more space to tell this story and to tell how the building comes to, into shape. For example, here, this page, we will explain it because there is some accident in the ramp of the garage. So people decided to build a new fence. So the new fence is actually the body of the dragon. And we always love this kind of uh, magmatic uh, or visual architecture. We know that uh, Joseph is very uh, fond of it. And, uh, so we, we, we wish we could also design something in real life, but we never had the opportunity. Again, we should have the freedom in graphic novel. So we actually make a new design for this uh, parking garage. And uh, here the, the ramp becomes the body of the dragon, and the mouse becomes the entrance of the garage, and so we put the office here in the green area. <laughs> yeah, dragon green area. But, it's pretty tedious, like uh, time consuming to make a uh, graphic novel. So unfortunately, even today, we still didn't finish it yet. Uh, but uh, fortunately, this summer, we had the opportunity to make the model for it first. Uh, we made it with a, a mixed um, material, and after we finished, we found that it could be a very perfect uh, stage for uh, stop motion uh, movies. Yeah. And we found that it's, uh, the best way to appreciate this model is if you follow the route of visiting the area. You can first take the sky train and get off on the station and get down to the uh, escalator or uh, staircase to the ground floor. And in the middle, you can stop for, uh, to take the view uh, for a while. Or you can take uh, the fastest way is the elevator. Then you can uh, go to the river side. And uh, here you will see this uh, beautiful uh, dragon king uh, temple. You can make a, a, a wish, best wish here. And then you go across the river, river through this uh, corridor bridge, go to the other side of the river, climb up a little bit, and now you see the garage building. And uh, here you, it is also where you will have a full picture of this uh, dragon uh, ramp and the dragon uh, entrance. And here, this is to show how the cars will drive up into the garage through the body of the dragon. 
And because the old stage was flooded, so we decided to make a new one for, for them. And this time, in order to prevent them from being flooded again, we decided to put everything, the whole theater, onto a flat boat. So in that case, that if the water comes again, the owner can stop the engine and just float the whole theater away out of this uh, uh, garage building. And uh, so how about the old one? We decided to leave this to the anti-water creatures. So here, they will stay there, stay underwater forever, and so the uh, actors and the uh, audience, they are the lobsters, the crabs, uh, the shrimps. And of course, in the middle, you will see the Dragon King sits in the uh, uh, VIP seat. <laughs> so the model itself actually tells the whole story about uh, Dragon Theater. We hope that we will finish the graphic novel as soon as possible. And also someday, maybe we can even try stop motion. Yeah, and then I also want to talk about the model. Uh, our attitude to model is the same. Uh, uh, our attitude towards the drawing. So uh, the model is not only uh, designed uh, to or representation to. It's also a kind of special aspect. But the quality we pursue in the model is different uh, from the pursuit in the drawing. Uh, in the model, we actually pursue a kind of uh, roughness, uh, handmade feeling, and also this randomness, uh, imperfection. So, uh, actually, uh, I feel uh, model is a kind of art belongs to amateur. Uh, actually, I believe that the high school student who can make a better model than university student. And in our office, actually, uh, the best one to make model is not architect, it's our content. So this model is made by our content. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, I think uh, for me, uh, especially in terms of art, cleanliness uh, is maybe a better quality than skillfulness. So that's why I think uh, you know, the stupid is much better than amazing. Oh. And uh, uh, this is another project, it's also about the garage and the theater. I don't know why these two elements, why they always come together. We are invited to take part in the um, art festival in the countryside. Normally, we ask artists to do a site based artwork, uh, and uh, uh, by doing this, they can attract, uh, attract more people to come to visit, therefore, to boost the local tourism. Um, at the beginning, we think we are doing something in the grassland or small village. But actually, they give us a garage. And this garage is uh, especially ugly when you go to the site because it's actually located in a very beautiful natural landscape, like the fish pond and green mountain. So, uh, the first reaction is to get rid of the garage, but it's impossible. So, we look at the, uh, look at the photo. Uh, again and again, and uh, gradually we are kind of like this, you know, outward between uh, the building and the natural landscape. We like the contrast between them. Uh, there is a power actually in make, you know, show the absurdity of the reality. So, in the end, we decided to use this power to push the whole situation into a more absurd condition. And again, we tried to find some inspiration from the local culture. And uh, we found that in this area, the, in South China, it's famous for this kind of uh, very uh, delicately, uh, uh, sophisticated, uh, decorated uh, traditional architecture. Uh, they, uh, the, the people at that time, they treat the buildings like canvas. They put out these beautiful clay drawings and clay sculptures. And also, uh, this area is uh, the origin of the uh, Cantonese opera. Even today, you can still find many of these uh, kind of open stage, open theaters in the public space. So uh, we think that they, there's something mind we can work with in this direction. Actually, the, uh, the opera house in the Chinese culture, they, traditionally, it is always a temporary building. We don't have any really the stone or this very concrete uh, theater house from the old time. Uh, even today in uh, Hong Kong, they still have this great tradition that 
for special occasions, they will come up with this uh, uh, temporary uh, theater with bamboo and uh, fabric, and only maybe lasting two weeks. And uh, so, uh, and also in the uh, another uh, example we find in a village in northern China is that this is a very minimal uh, uh, stage, only a couple of fabrics and uh, bamboo sticks. But it gives us an inspiration that it's almost like uh, contemporary art. We think we can also use fabric to do our uh, transformation for this garage facade. So we came up with this design that we decided to turn the garage facade into a huge uh, stage uh, with fabric. And in the middle of the uh, backdrop, we want to show the, uh, uh, the vernacular architecture in the nearby village. We decided to use some very um, uh, everyday uh, material, make everything down to earth. So we use a very uh, standard scaffolding system to uh, construct the first layer on the facade and uh, also and then put out the first layer of fabric. And then the distance between the scaffolding sticks is based on the width of the fabric. And then for the second layer of the scaffolding and the fabric, we use uh, uh, angles. Here you will see the familiar uh, views that we found in our Epson drawings to portray the buildings. And the last two, uh, two levels, uh, they are extruding from the whole facade. They are actually, uh, that you can actually go up there, just a uh, swing staircase, just like going up to the stage. And in order to make the uh, uh, production easier, we break down the pattern into, uh, the, the image into very simple geometric patterns. So the workers in the factory find it very easy to produce, to sew everything together. And this is the installation view in the process. It's looking like a performance by itself. Yeah, and uh, so this is the, uh, the final presentation of our work in the grand uh, stage. And we deliberately want to keep this uh, folk art quality. And uh, you will see that uh, we don't want everything to be perfect. We deliberately leave these uh, uh, sticks uh, of the scaffolding sti uh, sticking out of the fabric, just like the stitches in the sewing. And also, you will see uh, the fabrics not perfectly uh, hand on the sticks. Uh, they have a fleece and uh, change all the time with the wind. And inside, everything becomes very abstract. It's just a very beautiful colors with lights. Uh, yes, and uh, this is the final working on the installation. And uh, by adding it to the facade of the garage, the whole garage seems to become a theater or opera house. So driving a car into a garage becomes driving a car into a theater to watching some performance. So it sounds very absurd, but that's really what we want to achieve. So we hope that uh, you know by doing this we can attract more people to come to experience it, therefore to reach the goal of the art festival. The last category we want to talk about is uh, the element, urban elements we like, it's called urban objects. Uh, our definition for urban objects are those like say uh, small vehicles you find in the city, or the traffic lights, or the, some utility boxes you find at the corner of the street. Uh, we came to uh, pay attention to this topic uh, at the time when we participated in the uh, Chicago Architecture Biennale in 2021. Uh, at that time, we were uh, asked to uh, make a proposal for the vacant lots in uh, the city of Chicago, uh, more specifically in the neighborhood called Inglewood. And as an architect, first, maybe the reaction will be to make some buildings for the vacant lots. But uh, after research, we found that they don't need any new buildings. They already have a lot. So we tried to see if there's any other approach. We decided to do more research in our own neighborhood in Beijing. And we found that here, the way people treat public space is very different. There's no place vacant. People always find something to occupy that space, either with a tent or maybe with some um, old furniture or maybe by cars. They try to find a corner in the public space for their own. So we think that instead of making new buildings for Inglewood, why not use those urban objects to create a new space for the area? So for example, in this, um, we will create several scenes for this proposal. One of them here, you see that this is a 
recycling park, a garden, you will find this uh, abandoned bench in Beijing, and uh, here is a lot of um, straw away from domestic uh, uh, space and uh, things you don't need anymore. But here, all together, they could be a very cozy space for the neighbors. They can come here, have a chat. And also, there are a lot of um, public access equipment in Beijing, in all the communities. And here you see that in the same area now we have this beautiful design from Studio Farms. Uh, compared to this design, our equipment is really basic, it's very simple. But we found that uh, uh, the interesting part lies in how you can use those equipment. This is some uh, shots you can find in the uh, social media, like how some uh, grandpa and grandma they use very in a very uh, creative way. And uh, because of this, their exercise, some of these uh, places they become very popular. Many people come to take pictures and become a really hot spot. So we think that um, we also don't need to design new equipment for Inglewood. We just invite this grandpa and grandma to the area, and uh, they can still uh, continue their crazy exercise uh, with different uh, postures, and also can exercise with their uh, hockey. Uh, probably because they are here, more people will come to the neighborhood. So I think the, the, this is really uh, some previous data from a foreigner actually, compared to the local research, the researcher. Uh, I think uh, as foreigner, what we can do is provide a kind of fresh perspectives. So we, did, uh, we decided to emphasize this uh, foreign angle by using kind of special drawing format, uh, score painting, which is a uh, traditional uh, Chinese uh, painting format. Uh, it can bring uh, a lot of things together and create a continuous space in the horizontal direction. And we put all these urban objects uh, in the front, so it looks very big, even bigger than the buildings, than the infrastructures, and it seems like that these urban objects connect the buildings, infrastructures, trees, landscapes together. And because the essence of these uh, ideas about uh, the small things, uh, urban objects sometimes can uh, play a more important role in terms of connecting people and different urban resources together. Yeah, so this is the final contribution to the, the BNL and our proposal for Inglewood. Yeah. So starting from this project, we pay more attention to this kind of uh, urban office in our environment. And we try to find more examples. Here, this is a small vehicle we found uh, on our street. And it's, it was at night, and you see, when you see closer, you see this is very neatly organized uh, tea coffee shop. And we were very curious about why it was here and uh, who was the owner. And uh, the other day we passed by again, and uh, now we see the owner. owner. He's a, he is a disabled man, and uh, here you see another identical car. Apparently, if you compare the, the snow on the top, so he drives this car here and then open the shop and the, here this car actually was never moved so we suddenly realized that he used this car to become his shop and uh, just imagine that uh, for small business like this one he can never afford a proper shop in expensive city like Beijing and he can never build a shop here by his own it, will, it is illegal but if he put a car here turn it into a shop uh, because the, the car has wheels, so people and authority will think that he will move any time. So no one will question him anymore. Here, this paradox uh, uh, shows up that you are, you are looking like uh, being mobile, but the purpose is to stay here. So we really love this kind of finding, and uh, uh, it's uh, made us to rethink about this concept of mobility. Here in architecture, we talk about mobility, it's always about bringing people to somewhere. But here, what we see in those small vehicles, the purpose of being mobile is to find a space, to occupy space for your own. Because these kind of small vehicles, they usually owned by low-income uh, families. They use them to make a living in 
big cities. And um, we look at them as an extension of their domestic space, and also because they are like machines. So we call this uh, as the matching machine. And we want to make a whole project for it, uh, use uh, also model. So first of all, we made the model for the key coffee shop. Here you see these two same uh, identical uh, small vehicle. And, um, and then we also have example here. This is a food shop <coughs> in our neighborhood. And uh, this van on the right also belongs to the owner. Sometimes we just directly buy food from the van. So if we look at these two things together, we realize the pedestrian is also become part of the food shop. So we made a new design for this van. We changed the way how the door is opened by lifting it up and uh, it can form this arcade with the canopy of the shop facade. And here you will see clearly this arcade and see that this uh, pedestrian in the middle become part of the shop. So here we want to say that um, we know you can never maybe change the door like this. It's really uh, crazy. But here the purpose is not, is not to uh, offer solutions. We just want to reinforce the uh, phenomenon and uh, to show, so people can see this relationship more clearly. And another example from this project is this, uh, we got ideas from this kind of car covering this uh, camouflage fabric. Uh, we find many in our neighborhood and they stay there forever. Sometimes you wonder if there's really a car underneath. So we decided to play with this camouflage with our own design. We want to make a, a car. It's looking like a car, but it's actually a room. It can never move. And this is a room for people to come uh, play Mahjong or uh, have a chat. And we want, so we suppose that uh, it was parked in one of the spots. And here we ask you to pay attention to these two boards. They are also from the observation as they, uh, they have this here. Usually they are used to prevent uh, dogs from peeing on the tires. So to us, like they, they become the symbol of tires. So here we don't have wheels for our car, and, but we want these two boards to stay here. So this is uh, the ultimate uh, uh, creation for this domestic machine that we're serious. We want to, we start everything from prototype and we add our own imagination to it. And uh, yeah, finally, we come back to the idea of the uh, idea of the uh, The drawing you see in the atrium, the original version is actually a relief drawing we made in this summer for the, for the exhibition in Shanghai, this centerpiece. And uh, here, this is really our version of Ideal City, where you can see everything we like in this one. You see those apartment buildings, you see our dragon theater, our domestic machines, on our uh, um, the, the buildings from the urban villages, and uh, a lot of different uh, elements that we try to fit in this uh, city uh, portrait. And the, uh, uh, here we, what we present here is a two-dimensional <laughs> version. And the, uh, for its original uh, relief version, we try to work with different uh, techniques. We start with digital drawing, print out, and then we add tapes, add uh, stickers, uh, make different layers to enrich the visual effect. And here on the right is the uh, framework. The framework is uh, it's a relief. It's two-dimensional, and here we show want to show the infrastructure as we mentioned earlier. And then we put uh, everything everything on top of each other, make this very uh, 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 busy uh, appearance. And here is a close-up. You can see those uh, small balconies. They also uh, three-dimensional and uh, sticking out of the uh, uh, framework. And for the overall layout, we actually borrowed some ideas from the uh, fanciful images of the prisons, this collection, famous collection. Although those drawings are about a prison environment, we, we actually found more uh, vividness, more trace of life in those drawings than the paintings about ideal life. We found those ideal cities because those ideal cities seem a little bit like dead cities to us. Here, everything is feeling more than life. And for the final presentation, we also designed this classic style uh, frame for the drawing. 
uh, as a reference to this classic uh, concept I do see. The reason uh, here that uh, we want to uh, use this uh, frame to stand for the uh, classic ideal city, the order, proportion, and uh, so the solidness. And here, but the, the content, our drawing, they represent uh, chaos, randomness, and uh, sensibility. We want to have this uh, comparison between the classic and uh, our contemporary version of ideal city. Okay, uh, uh, we would like to end today's lecture with this photo, the uh, photos. Uh, this photo is from our ongoing project called uh, Sunday This Week. We will make small models uh, for uh, urban corner or urban city from in the city. And uh, we will take one photo to each model to reveal the extraordinary moment from this other view. Uh, actually, this method is the method we always use in our works. The working around the city, being a planner, and uh, bump into some interesting uh, spaces, interesting phenomenon. Then we start to uh, observe them, uh, document, document, documenting them, and sometimes uh, reinterpret them, reinterpret them to something else. So for us, designing is not only creating something new, but also about uh, observation or reinterpretation. Re 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 uh, back to the topic of ideal city, actually uh, to us, uh, only a small part of ideal city can be designed. And the most part of the ideal city is naturally involved by the usage of outdoor people. So, uh, actually, the subject of ideal city is not an issue of design to us. It's an issue about observation, uh, discovery, interpretation, uh, and our work is just collecting these uh, fragments of ideal city. We think these fragments of ideal city are everywhere. And uh, in this lecture, and also in the exhibition, we uh, show this our collections in a really high density way and uh, try to uh, make connections of them and uh, to make our version of uh, ideal city. Okay, that's it. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>
they are now trained by professional class, so it's more freedom for them to make model. And model is, uh, I think, this art form really friendly to everyone. You know, like you know, girls make dollhouse, they always make dollhouse. It's a kind of natural, human nature to make small miniatures. So it's open to everyone. So and uh, it's refused to some extent refused professional training. That's why I think actually in that professional uh, profession people can make better models. But not exactly not absolutely. Yeah, actually not absolutely because actually what we say that a non-architect can make better models, it means that just we really appreciate, appreciate this kind of freedom, free spirit because you are, you are not constrained by any rules. But it's also important why the, maybe the good models still come from architects in the end because you also need to make judgments and the judgment comes from maybe more professional education. So it's always a balance, we just try to also uh, remind ourselves not to lose our uh, like uh, the, the natural reaction to, to the world, but also keep our uh, like study like solid. Yeah, if that's that's the answer. Question. Thank you very much. You want to shout it out? Yeah, I think I'm more than that. Um, so you guys stress a lot that um, the ideal city is up to your own interpretation. Um, you know, everybody else can have their own idea of it. But that being said, I just wanted to ask. At what point did you guys choose to incorporate nature or other aspects? Because I noticed that a lot of the aquarium very packed in detail, mm -hmm. like sociable. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that stems from your guys' um, background, living in China, so yeah. especially more that service space, mm -hmm. but I just yeah. wanted to know. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a great question. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much for your observation. I think that's also, yeah, that I think um, your observation is totally correct. It's like, because we are from a very um, high density city, and we are urban kids, we never live in a um, like, uh, rural area, so we are really used to this kind of identity. So that's why sometimes, at first time when we came to the state, when we see this beautiful uh, natural landscape, we were really surprised or shocked because we're not, not used to it. Uh, that's why so far we our like portrayal of the city they are very high density. You don't see a lot of natural uh, elements. That, that's true. But I think that uh, maybe with our the change of our own experience and we see more of the world, we believe that it will also change. Right. I, I, I already changed a little bit because after I because we actually we both all were born uh, grow up in big city. So uh, for reason. Events. We are uh, based in Syracuse, a small city, and uh, uh, we have very good experience that uh, you just drive 10 minutes, you can go to the nature completely, which we can never uh, get experiences in a city like Beijing. So I guess that's why we kind of make a lot uh, the natural part, but maybe after this kind of experience, we'll consider adding more elements. Yeah, hopefully maybe five more years later. <laughs> if you uh, come up to our see our work we can you will find some natural landscape in our new uh, projects. Thank you very much. Shout it out. Excuse me, could you, uh, if you can elaborate on uh, anything? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, like, part of your creative process includes model making yeah. or just drawing? Do you do models first or last? Or do you do them throughout? Um, yeah. Um, I think I have a, uh, a model, actually, a physical model and a digital model, actually, uh, for Physical model, we just make a model and directly, and the model goes to uh, photography. I think that's uh, one way. And uh, what we do the drawing, we kind of uh, sometimes we make. Uh, I think in the beginning, actually, we made uh, a three model totally, but later we 
found, uh, we find that uh, the surgery to convert uh, convert the model to two brain actually reduces a lot of uh, flexibility. So later in the later story, actually, we do simple surgery model to get the basic uh, shape of the building, and then we play with different viewpoints, put them together, and adding details in the two D brain uh, direction. Question. Or if they are asking about like about models and uh, drawings, these two different things, we um, we I think everything depends on the purpose of each project. What we want to show, or what we what is our strongest reaction to what we see here. So we will always try to find uh, the most e effective uh, tool for this particular project. If we think three D model or maybe a handmade model is enough. Then we only do the model, we don't think drawing is necessary. But maybe for, in some cases, you feel drawing is much more um, uh, effective or efficient, then we only go for the drawing. So we, we are very open for all this kind of uh, uh, choice of uh, a medium in our creative process. Thank you. I have a related question, I think. And this question is also in some part on behalf of uh, my students, third year, shout out to the third year studio. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so the third year architecture students in, in the next two weeks are going to be making drawings inspired by some of your drawings of a specific neighborhood in Chicago. And they're going to be largely working in teams. And I, so my question is, what would you recommend to students? What, how would you recommend would be a strategy or a technique that they might use when multiple students are working on a single drawing of a city? Um, we always work with like a group for all the drawings we have, special large drawings. And our experience is that um, if you, you are working as a group, uh, for a drawing, it's very similar to like making design. You, need to, you always need to come up with a master plan first. The master plan is actually the, the skeleton of everything, and then you and then you can break down the uh, the workload based on this plan. Because uh, we found that is uh, if you always work uh, digitally, the good thing about uh, using computer is that you can work at the same time. So by dividing the task based on the plan, uh, you divide the the area that you want to draw. So maybe five of you you can do the drawing all together and. Set up a standard is very important from the very beginning. Make sure that all the drawings can be connected in the end and keep the right proportion or scale, this kind of thing. And then, so, um, I don't know if, uh, because for us it's easier that if we work in the studio, we always have a normal control. Uh, maybe at a, in a school, uh, like in a team project, it's also helpful if you can find someone to be in charge of this kind of overall uh, putting things together in the end. I suggest teacher teacher can do the cycle uh, part, and uh, the students will feel it uh, nice. <laughs> Throwing me under the bus. <laughs> Uh, but 
uh, unfortunately we couldn't give you any experience in that because we didn't do any of these kind of projects. Yeah. So that's why we also enjoy doing drawings. So no one will uh, like check on us. <laughs> I can just, I can just project my voice. Uh, so, when you are working on your pieces, how do you conceptualize going through it? Do you work in your pieces in sections, or like, what's the process in which you are working and work, like, finalizing these drawings? Mm -hmm. So, what's that thought process? Through the process. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in general, that we, for the large panorama drawings, because for us, the topics is always similar. It's always about city, just a very really different city or different part of the same city. But we try to uh, find a different point each time. Because we believe, although they are all the same as a drawing for a city, you can find different uh, topic or different uh, reference. Uh, maybe it's a, because, for example, it's a, it could be um, Sometimes, for example, the, uh, the Chicago uh, the scroll drawing, we take an idea from the scroll painting. So maybe it seems that you're starting from the form, but the form actually gives you a lot of inspiration. You can have a lot of reference to look at, to look at the uh, Chinese landscape paintings, and also to look at the, we also uh, refer to the Renaissance press hall where they play this projection. So this all helps us to uh, construct our piece. So, uh, although the technique is always the same, but you can always find a different reference to, to make the, the, each piece very different. Yeah, if, if that's the answer. Or sometimes you can start with uh, play with the layout, it could be a, one approach, or sometimes you just uh, play with uh, a, a subject. Yeah, we find it's very uh, effective. Um, I don't know if you, if you can go to our website, you see a, a piece called uh, uh, Taoa village, small acre city. That is an uh, uh, imaginative portrait about the Taoa village in China. It's a fictional. But we follow that layout completely from family wise four acre city. So this is also an example about how you can play with this concept behind the drawings. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's a great note to end on. And uh, before we uh, depart for the evening, a couple of quick reminders. Um, first is all, many, almost all of the drawings and models that Huyan and Leon showed tonight are actually in the exhibition in the atrium, albeit many of them in miniature form. So I encourage you to go on a scavenger hunt after the lecture and find your favorite model and your favorite drawing that you saw tonight and find where in, the, in our exhibition, which is the first solo exhibition of drawing architecture studio in the United States. See if you can find it, a little scavenger hunt. Uh, secondly, I also really want to thank the students who helped us install that um, intricate exhibition. I want to thank Naveen Reddy, Irvi Varma, Samrudi Shidhakar, Harshini Varansi, Maitri Savani, Sanika Malankar, Ishan Shamra, Mian Wan Che, Jing Zhang Wang. We really, really appreciate uh, your, your work and, your, and, and also a big thanks to Professor John Clark uh, for helping us put together that exhibition.